Hey, Barracuda fans, Nick Nolenberger here. We're live from the locker room. As you can tell behind me, it is Kansas City Blades Night. It's part of our five-part throwback series honoring the affiliates of the San Jose Sharks. We already honored the Cleveland Barons. Tonight is Kansas City Blades Night, the affiliate of the Sharks from 1991 to 1996 as members of the IHL. San Jose enters tonight's matchup against the Bakersfield Condors, winners of their last four straight. They have won five straight on home ice. They come in with the best winning percentage in the entire American Hockey League and have the best home winning percentage as well to the Barracuda after picking up, as we mentioned, five straight wins on home ice, including a 5-3 win over the San Diego Goals on Monday. Last night, San Jose was in Bakersfield. They scored the game's first four goals. They took a 4-0 lead. They killed off all seven Bakersfield power plays in route to a 4-2 win as the Condors were able to get a couple late goals to make it close, but San Jose would hold them off for the win. Let's take a look at the AHL Pacific Division standings. As you can tell, San Jose is top the AHL Pacific. So as you can tell, too, San Jose atop the Pacific with the loss last night. Bakersfield slips just below the Stockton Heat in the standing. Stockton won last night 3-2 in overtime against the Manitoba Moose. Bakersfield had won their previous two games going into last night. They had the second best home power play in the entire American Hockey League going into last night's game. San Jose with a top 10 penalty killing group and the Barracuda were able to kill off four Bakersfield power plays in the opening 20 minutes. They would eventually have to kill off a total of seven in route to the win. Antoine Biba was excellent in between the pipes. He made 33 saves on 35 shots. And San Jose got a goal in the first period from John McCarthy, a second period goal from Jeffrey Viel and Alexander True. And then Manny Weider in the final frame was able to score as well for San Jose in route to that win as the Bakersfield Condors would get a couple goals, as we mentioned, in the uh, final five minutes minutes of play to get within two. Gambrell now with the puck. He'll circle, give it over to McCarthy, who enters his own late, crosses it near side to East Simone. East Simone will leave for Middleton. Down to the end line for Gambrell. Round the net, wrapper on a tap, the puck is loose, McCarthy, he scores! The work by Gambrell sets up John McCarthy and San Jose opens up the scoring. And it comes to the 9.33 mark of the first. Waffle boarded into the near boards by Bebo, and the rebound's picked up by San Jose. And Latunov down the right side for Biel. Jeffrey Biel, Maxime Latunov down low. Biel comes out with it. He looks to center, circles around, centers in front, and it was just out of the reach of 84 until follow up chance, backhanded in, they score. It's Jeffrey Biel, Johnny on the spot, and San Jose takes a 2 0 lead. And Viel's pressure, he is rewarded. He's Middleton. Middleton fakes the shot. Now he looks for an alley. Henrister block comes free to True. Turns, fires, and put it just wide along the near side. Great look there for True. And it's skipped about six inches wide. Center and feed True again from Perron. And they score. Alexander True continues his red hot tear as Perron sets him up on a brilliant pass from below the goal line. As he does sauce run over two Condor sticks and True goes barn out. Toss night. Take a teddy bear to the game and throw it on the ice when the Barracuda could score their first goal. And they'll be donated to kids in need throughout Santa Clara County. A pivotal point in the year. There's a shot from the right point. It's tipped past Starrett. And San Jose makes it 4 0. D. Simone was the one who pulled the trigger on that right point. Was it tipped in front? It certainly took a wicked change in direction. And with Weedier. As we just watched the highlights from last night's victory, San Jose with that 4-2 win over Bakersfield. Four different goal scorers finding the net. And all of a sudden, John McCarthy and Alexander True are San Jose's two hottest forwards right now as they continue to find the back of the net. For Johnny Mack, that is three goals over his last three games.
for Alexander True. He has four over his last three games for San Jose. And True, who scored just one goal over his first 13, has six over his last seven. He is now second on the team in goals, only behind Francis Pirani at seven. And he also is second now on points with 13. So True has really begun to find his stride. Of course, last year he finished second on the team with 15 goals. We spoke to True following the game last night and his thoughts about his team's performance, what they need to do to uh, apply the same type of pressure tonight and pick up another two points. We do preface the uh, interview a little bit of background noise. So we do apologize, but some good stuff from True as he spoke to me post game. Uh, I think we're playing well as a team. Uh, me and my line mates are playing well as well. Uh, we're just we're just hungry to win games, score goals and stuff like that. And and yeah, we're getting rewarded. Big road victory for you guys tonight. You got the, the you know you killed off four power plays in the opening period. End up killing off seven throughout the game. What were you guys saying to each other on the bench as you guys continued to have to go on the PK and kind of stick with the program? Yeah, great job of the killers. Huge blocks. Everyone on the bench going wild. Uh, get a lot of uh, what's it called? Um, we got a lot of momentum from the, the big block shots and the kill, especially the four minute kill. So, so yeah, a lot of momentum uh, and great job. How do you turn around tomorrow? You know, it's going to be a good turnaround, same team. How do you turn around tomorrow and get another two points? Uh, try to get as much rest as possible. It's going to gonna get in late and, and, and yeah, it's a quick turnaround. We got to get ready quick. So, so just get some rest now and, uh, and, and yeah, keep going tomorrow, I guess. Last question, you talked before the game about playing with, you know, Francis Perron. He set you up on that goal, and you almost kind of gave him a look because it was a great pass for a couple of different guys. You kind of shook your head almost in disbelief and got through. What has it been like playing with Frankie so far? Uh, it's been great. He's He's got a lot of skill. Uh, he's a great playmaker, great player, and and right when he got the puck, we kind of made eye contact, and then a half a second later, it was on my tape, so, yeah, it was... It's, it's pretty pretty nice playing with, uh, with a player with that skill set. So some good stuff there from Alex True as we spoke to him following last night's 4-2 to win. Man, has he been red hot. It's good to see after a slow start for him, just the one goal over his first 13. But he mentioned it, getting inside, battling, you know, doing the dirty, gritty things it takes to score goals, and he's begun to get rewarded with it. And he has certainly found some really good chemistry with Francis Perron, who just continues to put up points himself. We would like to remind fans tonight, of course, the Barracuda will be wearing the especially jersey behind us for Kansas City Blades Night. You can bid on these jerseys by going to barracuda.gesture.com. That'll take you straight to the mobile bidding site. Also, if you want to get tickets, you can go to sjbarracuda.com slash Kansas City. Pretty easy, or you can walk on down to the box office here, the Threat Metrics box office at SAP Center. You can pick up tickets as well. You don't want to miss this one. This is part of our five-game affiliate throwback series. It's the second of our five here tonight and it should be a lot of fun a different looking jersey than the other ones you'll see so it should be fun to honor the affiliate of the sharks from 91 to 96 a reminder to fans too you have four more in your car parking is free all concessions are just four dollars that includes draft beers so make sure to come on down early it should be a pretty packed house tonight at sap center and an early start here on this sunday it is a five o'clock puck drop here at sap so you want to make sure to get sure to get in your seats early and enjoy all the pregame festivities as well completely rebrand as the kansas city uh blades you'll notice all the graphics up on the big screen you'll notice on our social media channels as well today if you cannot make the game while we'll full broadcast coverage on kdow starting at 4 30 you can also listen live on the sharks plus sap center app and go into sjbarracuda.com slash listen you want to watch the game for a small fee ahl tv is your spot again five o'clock puck drop kansas city blades night you don't want to miss it well the kansas city blades were there five years um, and it was really a lot of players that we took in the expansion dispersal drafts ended up going there well like first i got drafted by the by the minnesota north stars and then i got picked up by the sharks in the in the dispersal draft and then uh, ended up signing with the sharks and they sent me to kansas city they were in Kemper Arena, a really nice arena in, in Kansas City. I, I mean, it was it was pretty much like a NHL arena. You could have played NHL hockey in there. Kemper Arena is a, is a good old barn. It was the uh, IHL. That was our, our five years in the International Hockey League. At that time, 
uh, NHL teams were split almost 50-50 between the American Hockey League and the International Hockey League. They were both looked at as uh, development leagues. Back then it was different. The AHL was a more of a development league, which they had, but the IHL was uh, more of a veteran league, but also development, so. A lot of guys in the IHL that were older, they, you know, they, they were great hockey players, but there was just like one thing they couldn't do that couldn't get them to the next level. It was old school minor league at that time. There were a lot of, a lot of fights, a lot of uh, uh, physical play and everything else, which uh, uh, you know, was a good, good development league in that way. That transition was pretty, pretty good for me, pretty easy. Um, you know, I wasn't afraid of going in the corners, getting the pucks. I mean, I wasn't a fighter by any means, but uh, we had guys that did that. <laughs> the way the expansion draft was at that time, uh, teams were able to protect 16 skaters and two goalies. So a lot of the players that we got were premier minor league players, and that's uh, we went in right away that year and won the Turner Cup. You know, it was it was a, definitely a whirlwind for me signing my first pro contract from getting cut from the Olympic team to signing my first pro contract to winning the Turner Cup. You know, that all happened within four months. We had a number of uh, players that ended up being, you know, uh, really big contributors to the Sharks. Players like Archers Urbe and uh, Santa Souza Lynch. We had Jeff Odgers. Gary Emmons was there. He was a center, big scorer. Craig Cox, who I think scored the first Sharks goal in history, I believe. It was a, a veteran team for the IHL. We also uh, had our own staff in there. Kevin Constantine was there for a couple of years until he actually became the head coach of the Sharks. Yeah, you know, looking back on that, that was a, a blessing. You know, I played for Kevin uh, Constantine my first year in Kansas City and uh, he really pushed me but he did it the right way and he, he got the most out of me more than I more than I probably could have ever thought I'd get out of myself and then uh, we won the Turner Cup he gets hired by San Jose I'm like hmm this is looking pretty good and um, and I got an opportunity and that's all I ever wanted was an opportunity to play in the NHL.